Happy Saturday, happy Saturday. Hey, today we're going to be talking about how active duty military, yeah, y'all, and veterans can get 100% VA disability benefits permanent in total. Tune in, you're going to like this one. Active duty military transitioning out, utilizing the benefits delivery of discharge as well as veterans today. Hey, tune in, let's get into it. Okay, so starting with BDD, basic requirements for that is you need to know your separation date. ETS, EAS, whatever the fuck, you know, whatever it may be, you need to know that. You know, if you're getting out in six months, 12 months, two years, hey, you need to know that. Service treatment record, as well as all private medical documents to the VA in order to, so they can have your complete medical profile. And this is going to be for your first claim, whatever the fuck it may be. So, and a new requirement is going to be the separation health assessment part a that is needed if you're mil active duty military if you're a veteran that form is not going to be needed and the last thing specifically is whenever you submit that claim bdd only military available for the next 45 days so yet yeah, you got your 180 day window mark from eas once you submit that claim you need to be available for the next 45 days i would even say 60 days so hey let your chain of command know Hey, I put in my VA disability claim, taking advantage of the BDD benefits delivery of discharge. Don't mess with me. Don't fuck with me with the next couple of weeks, month and a half, two months, so I can get my benefits, everything assessed, go to all my compensation and pension exams. And, you know, step one, if you plan on doing 40 or four years, make sure you at least get into medical once a year. To just do a physical, whatever the hell. Grab anything, identify anything that's hurting. Cervical strain, back strain, you know. You have some issues with the booty hole. <laughs> hey, get that taken care of. Get it documented. Get a diagnosis at the very least. If you can't, I mean, there's some branches of the military. <laughs> Marine Corps and the Navy. The doctors there, for some reason, they don't like to give you a diagnosis. They'll throw pills at you all day. They'll give you treatment. They'll send you to physical therapy. Your leg can be broken. They will still not get you a diagnosis. Make sure you get a diagnosis prior to separating out of the military, either through, you know, your respective branch, you know, medical center, or go out, get a private medical provider. You may have to pay, you know, a couple hundred dollars here and there, but you're going out, you're getting evaluated, you're getting assessed. And this applies to veterans as well. If you did four, eight, 40 years, whatever the hell maybe. If you've done 40 years, I know you had 100%. 100% got them over there. But if you did four, eight years, you got out, you think like, okay, you know, I don't deserve VA disability. No. All veterans deserve veteran benefits. Regardless if it's at 0%, 100%, two legs, four legs, no legs, doesn't matter. All veterans, we all signed a dotted line to fight for our country, die for our country, whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? Come on, good benefits. Uh, then another thing is anything, something as small as a complaint goes a long way once you're separate, once you separate from the military. Uh, going into step number two. Well, you know, tip number two is going to be organize your disability package for each disability you plan on filing make sure you have a separate file folder either hard copy or digital if you got a knee strain lumbar sacral strain if you got migraines ptsd insomnia depression whatever the case may be if you have a diagnosis for it put it put in a folder aside from a diagnosis start developing a personal statement not for every disability However, for those serious disabilities, or at least the ones that yield higher percentages, such as mental health, migraines, anything neurological, um, muscular skeletal, if you have complete ankylosis, that's, you know, buddy statements and lay statements are going to be eyes on um, evidence, aside from whatever medical diagnosis you have, as well as treatment history. Go on from there. Let me look at my notes. Um, complaints to them from your doctors, as well as any important appointment information. So if you went in for, you know, a strained knee, you was playing basketball, you know, one of your juniors, they blew your knee out. Okay, it was looking like, <laughs> it was looking like this, but the opposite direction. Definitely get that documented. You want to get a diagnosis. If it tore anything, ACL, 
motherfucking hamstring, you know, complete kneecap is done, it's floating. You want to get that diagnosed, you want to maintain that documentation. Step number three, make sure your medical record is complete. At least for me, hey, I, I served eight years, I deployed twice, I went out to Europe for my last, my last contract. <laughs> Ain't gonna talk about that, that's another story. Hey, me, me. But the two periods in which I deployed, none of my medical evidence was in that, um, you know, in my medical records. So, tried to look it up, tried to obtain it after the fact because I thought it was in there prior to separating. But if I would have known about, you know, everything about the VA, VA process, everything that I would have needed to set me up 100% correct the first time, it probably wouldn't have taken me six years to get to 100% permanent total. But hey, here we are. And I'm trying to push y'all in the right direction. Aside from that, mm, make sure your medical records are good. Because once you separate, they're going to print everything out as well as give you a CD. Um, I think in the Marines, they may be giving CDs now. I, I know when I got out, they gave me a fucking big ass stack like that. So, you know, you want to make sure you take care of that. Um, as well as ensure your DD-214 is correct. It lists all your deployments. All your mobilizations, if you're reservist, um, you know, everywhere, all your service ribbons and medals. If you're following anything for PTSD or mental health, combat PTSD related, your combat action ribbon or any specific medals you got during that time period can be utilized as, you know, a nexus. An event is pretty much a link to your military um, in lack of a diagnosis. Like if you lack a diagnosis, for PTSD, you have a combat action ribbon. That you know, that combat action ribbon is solid medical evidence. Only thing you do, you really do need to identify is your stressor. And I've I go into details on PTSD specific claims. Check that video out. <laughs> Tip number four, at least for you know active duty military. If you made it this far in the video, hey, good on you. Appreciate your strife. Oh. Uh. Prior to that, prior to your 180 day mark for the BDD process, make sure you have everything ready to submit that claim. It's gonna definitely greatly expedite the process that you're waiting in the VA claims process. Like you start at 180 days, you should be delivered benefits prior to separation or a month, maybe a month and a half, two months at max afterwards. Versus if you wait until you separate, the day you separate, you could be in the VA claims process for the next year, year and a half. Especially right now due to the PACT Act related claims. Uh, got a different video on that. I'm not going to get into details. But hey, um, definitely that's going to speed up your uh, speed up the process and get you ready for that 100% permanent total this year. <clears throat> Tip number five. Identify two years prior to separation. You should, I mean, two years prior, you should already know you're going to get out. Identify a veteran service organization that you are willing to utilize to help you. I mean, regardless of how much VA disability knowledge, VA knowledge, military knowledge you know, up until you submit that VA claim, hey, once you submit it, you may not hear anything until a CEP exam as well as a denial. You know, hopefully you get to the CMP exam depending on the medical evidence that you supply. But even for me, when I went from, uh, you know, from 10% to 100%, I utilize a veteran service officer. You know, I personally recommend Wounded Warrior Project, but I've heard good things about DAV as well as VFW, but whichever VSO you utilize, um, even county VSOs, you know, very, <laughs> very few, I'm talking like less than a percent are good, um, county VSO wise. Pardon me, but uh, definitely you want to get that in and make sure that the VSO has access to VBMS. What is it called? <coughs> the Veterans Benefit Management System. That VSO is pretty much useless to you. Um, you know, if you're a veteran, definitely 100% recommend you utilize a VSO. Active duty military, you can you can kind of wing it, but you know why why go into the gray area as the VA? with no one else by your side you know you need a battle buddy come on battle buddies up guy going to battle with a battle buddy you know 
He's watching your sex. The VSO's watching your sex. You watching the forward, uh. But once you submit that claim, the VSO got your forward, and you watching the sex. So whenever the VSO comes to you, hey, I need this, I need that, hey, hey, hey. you know, the VSO is there to educate and lead you along to service connection. You know, if anything else, they're, they're trying to help you out, and as well as you know, some of these VSOs, they have um good uh, benefits within the organization. All right, and the last tip is. Get familiar with the CFR 38 Schedule of Ratings Manual. This is going to show you all the disabilities that the VA rate for compensatable purposes as well as for non-compensatable. So if there's a disability that you plan on filing, look up the CFR 38, you can go to Google, or you can go to the va.gov website, download it, or you know, just save it. You, know, you ain't got to download it because I'm, I'm sure you're not going to read it. Save it on your phone. We take it, you know, on the John. Take it a number two for your boy. Look into it. Whatever disabilities you plan on submitting is going to have specific criteria needed for a service. You, you're definitely going to need a diagnosis for everything. But depending on your severity, you know, impacts to your work and your personal life, range of limitation, limitation of flexion, things of this matter. This is what the VA is looking for. Pain is not a primary concern of the VA until it becomes service connected and it's in the upper echelon of percentages. Um, but definitely check out the CFR 38. It's definitely going to you know steer you in the right direction as far as what the VA is looking for in terms of medical evidence. And if you want some extra credit, you can always read M21-1 adjudication manual and that's the manual that that veteran service representative at the VA who's rating your claim, as well as for the CMP examiners, you know, the compensation and pension examiners, what, how they're going to be evaluating your symptomology, your issues, your diagnosis for the examiner, and how they're going to uh, completely adjudicate the claim from that VSR veteran service representative standpoint. Now, a. Hey, if y'all like this type of content, y'all know what to do. Stick around, troll around my videos. Make sure you watch it all the way through. Fuck with my watch time. <clears throat> but hey, trying to get into the YouTube algorithm to achieve, you know, service connection through the denials, first claims, secondaries, increase, as well as set military folk up for the right path when submitting VA claims for disability. Hey, this is Debo out. Motherfucker, salute.